Good evening and welcome to our Monday Thursday. So folks at home, if you would, if you no, do not have your elements ready, perhaps you could get them ready, perhaps during one of the hymns before the, we partake of communion. Tomorrow morning we will have the Good Friday service at 11 a.m. Again, we welcome you to join us here in person in the sanctuary or via Zoom as you watch us. As we come in silent prayer, perhaps the aspect we could remember tonight, particularly we know of the physical suffering that Jesus went through, but as of this night also, he was, when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, idea of who Jesus would be in terms of being a Messiah. And so when the pressure was on, or we might say when the heat was on, they abandoned him and fled like scared rabbits on Monday, Thursday, and then on Good Friday. So let us come in prayer and remember how the Lord, even though he is abandoned, he never abandons us. Amen. Joining with me as you have it in your bulletins in the call to worship. On this night, on this night, On this night, let us continue in prayer. Let us pray. Eternal and ever blessed God, who in your own infinite compassion for weak and hurt erring men and women did not spare your own Son, but did deliver him up for us all. On this night, give us reverence, humility, and faith as we approach the mystery of his agony, that we may enter into the fellowship of his sufferings, and that our sins may be forgiven for his name's sake. Almighty God, whose blessed Son Jesus Christ did as on this day endure the dread agony of Gethsemane, when his soul was exceeding sorrowful even unto death, give us grace to know that our sins were the cause of his sorrow, and that our guilt weighed him down and filled his soul with anguish. And grant us, we beseech thee, to have such abhorrence of all evil that we may suffer with him in his sorrow tonight. Teach us to watch and pray that we may be kept through the hour of temptation and give us such willingness of spirit, strength of heart, and patient quietness that we may not shrink from drinking his cup nor fail him in his hour of trial through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. Have mercy upon us, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out our transgressions. Wash us thoroughly from our iniquity and cleanse us from our sin. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will never despise. 
In Christ, our sins are forgiven. Let us go and live in the freedom that we have. I ask you to join with me in the Lenten liturgy for this Monday, Thursday. During Lent, we remember that even in the darkest moments of suffering and pain, God is with us. While innocent, Jesus died a grueling death on the cross to show us the way to God's love and grace. Jesus Christ died for us. Let us respond to God's grace by living lives worthy of Christ's immeasurable gift. Let us pray. Gracious God, the gift of Christ's death on the cross is beyond our understanding. In gratitude for Christ's service, we pray for the courage to follow him and to have our lives changed by him, in whose name we pray. Amen. We continue with the praise selection, O love that will not let me go. Good evening. Good evening. 
Please join with me in saying the unison prayer for illumination as it is printed in the supplementary worship material. Let us pray. God of Lent, just as your son set his face toward Jerusalem, may we respond to his sacrifice so that we too may be drawn to live lives worthy of the cross. Amen. Today's first reading is from Luke, chapter 22, verses 14 through 23. Jesus and the 12 disciples gathered in the upper room for the Passover meal. Jesus institutes the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. As we prepare to read and listen to God's word, let us be attentive, for God is speaking. Again, today's first reading is from the Gospel of Luke, reading from chapter 22, verses 14 to 23, which can be found in the bulletin PDF. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. As he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another, which one of them it could be who would do this? The word of the Lord. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. You are bought with a price. He has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The psalmist says, and we say also, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I have everything I need. Ho, everyone that thirst, come ye to the waters. And he that has no money, come, Come and buy and eat. Yea, come and buy wine and milk without price and without money.
Jesus said and says to us, even on this night, when he would leave the table and go to the Garden of Gethsemane and begin the most cruel of sufferings, both physically and emotionally. Yet he is the one who still tells us, come to me, all you who, are, who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you shall find rest and peace unto your souls. We, com we continue with the communion hymn, 537, Twas on that night. <laughs>
Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for God's righteousness working in their lives. They shall be filled. Therefore, that we may fulfill our Savior's institution in righteousness and joy, let us now follow his example in word and now in action. As the Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, I take these elements of bread and the cup to be set apart from all common uses to this holy use and mystery. And as he blessed and gave thanks, let us draw near to God and offer our prayer of thanksgiving. Let us pray. O oh God, we come to you, the God of all creation, the God who created and saw that everything was good. We thank you, O oh God, that down through the years and the centuries you have always been with your people. Even when your people have strayed and gone their own way, you have never turned your back on them. And you have given of yourself to them. And we come with angels and archangels and the whole host of heaven as together with them we acclaim your glory. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O Lord Jesus Christ, who has on this night instituted the sacrament of Holy Communion of your table, of your disciples then and now sitting together with you. Gracious Lord, we take our place at the table this evening, even as the first disciples took their place. And, O oh Lord, we would seek to never betray you, never run away from you, never turn our back on you. Because, O oh Lord, we know that you are the Lord who goes right to the very end for our sake, that you who knew no sin became our sin, that you are the one who institutes this time together, this sacred time around this meal. Indeed, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we thank you, O Lord Jesus Christ, for the giving before you ascended into heaven the giving of your presence and the very presence of the Father with us through the Holy Spirit that comes upon us so gently as a dove, that has the power that's invisible and yet it's the very power of a very terrific windstorm. But not outward power, power within us that the power of suffering and sin and death is turned into life, that the life we have now is the life that we have forever. And so, oh God, we come. We come to you as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We come in the Spirit with confidence to you, the Father, and we come with the very words of Jesus who taught and teaches those who seek discipleship in their life as together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. According to the holy institution, command, and example of our Lord Jesus Christ, and for a memorial of him we do this, 
who on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had blessed and given thanks to God, he broke it. And he said, Hey, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me until I come again, as I will. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Through him, with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, we are not worthy to come before you, but only say the word, and we shall be healed. Take, eat, this is the body of Christ, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of him. I will take the cup of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord my God. I am the vine, you are the branches. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son Jesus Christ did, as on this day, ordain in the Holy Sacrament the perpetual memorial of his death and the communion of his risen life, grant that when obedience to thy command we keep the feast, we may approach your table always with love and humble hope that discerning its sacred mystery, we may feed by faith on his body and blood and be made partakers of your heavenly grace through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, who is our strength and our redeemer. Amen.
from Luke's Gospel, the 22nd chapter and 21st verse. These are the words of Jesus as they are partaking at the table. He says, but behold, the hand of him who betrays me is on the table. I think you would agree with me that coming to the Lord's table for us is a time of peace. If we are ever to have peace as Christians, this is one of the times, and, and this is the night for peace. As we remember how Jesus instituted that first communion, that first fellowship around the common table with his disciples. I hope that you can say with me that some of the most peaceful times of your life have been when you have come to the table. Perhaps you remember a particular communion at a particular time in your life, and it just flooded your soul with that peace. Yes, coming to the table is a time of peace, in spite of us. It's just his grace and peace coming as on this night. However, the first communion, the meal of the Passover with his disciples, was anything but a meal of peace. As Jesus sat with his disciples, there was a lot of agitation going on. A dispute broke out. Which of them, as they sat at the table, the question arises, which one of them is the greatest? Can you imagine sitting with your family, having a big family meal with your extended family and saying, well, which member of the family is the greatest here? With the obvious indication it might be the speaker. Doesn't make for a great meal of peace, I don't think. A dispute like that does not make for a peaceful meal. But that's what happened at the Last Supper. And after Jesus had taken the bread and the cup, he then says to his disciples, here he has the bread and the cup, and he says to his disciples, not peace I give you, but he says this, behold, the hand of the one who betrays me is with me on the table. Again, that does not make for a pleasant meal, a peaceful meal. If you heard someone say at a table you were at, the one who's going to betray me is right here, right now. At the table, at that first communion of Jesus together with his disciples, we see the difference between the hands of Judas and the hands of Jesus. With Judas, with Judas we see the hands of selfishness. We read concerning Judas, who had betrayed Jesus to the chief priest for a mere 30 pieces of silver, we mustn't think that this was a spur-of-the-moment decision by Judas. Betrayal takes some time and effort and thought. You don't just betray a person on the spur of a moment. This selfishness of Judas, this wanting to always get, give me, give me, that's the way it was for Judas all along. Nothing new here at the table. Jesus is not surprised to know that there's a hand on the table that will betray him. In John chapter 12, verse 1 to 8, in fact, we had this as a reading on Sunday when Mary anoints Jesus' feet, that beautiful act, anointing his body for death. 
Judah says, well, why wasn't this ointment sold for, for 300 denarii, a, a year's wages almost? And why wasn't it given to the poor? Here we have righteous Judas here. When Judas said this, he had no concern for the poor at all. It was a, an invisible mask. We have visible masks. His was an invisible mask. Giving the look of righteousness and goodness, but beneath he was a crook. He was a thief. He was the actual treasurer of the disciples. Like any group, you have to have someone who takes care of the financial means. But Judas was pretty good at what we used to call, I don't know what people in finance call it these days, but Judas was pretty good at fudging the books. He took out as much as probably he put in over time but on the books, like many of those who do this type of thing, it looked good until it was, had a deep look into it. The hand of Judas, the hands of Judas, at that table and everything leading up to that table were hands of selfishness. What's in it for me? What do I get out of it? That's all his faith meant to him. Isn't that a shame? When someone's faith, all it means to them is, what can I get out of it? What's in it for me? And even worse, that's not only what his faith meant to him, that's all that Jesus meant to him. He was really using Jesus towards his own. And oh, he had all the appearance of being a disciple. He went with Jesus and the healings and the teachings, Sermon on the Mount. He was there. His downfall was this. Give me. And I never have enough. I want more. The hands of, Jesus, of Judas were hands of selfishness. No question about it. And we're not surprised to see it come to fruition or a crescendo here at the table. It was like that all along for three years. But everything it eventually comes out. And unfortunately, that's when it had to come out, when Jesus institutes the Last Supper. So with Judas, we have the hands of selfishness. With Jesus, we see the hands of service. Of service. The hand of Jesus is not out to get what he can get. It's extended to give. They're extended to serve. What are the first words that Jesus says and that we have in the communion service? Take, take, eat. This is my body. Giving, giving of himself. Hands of service. This cup is a New Testament in my blood. Take the cup. It's the cup of salvation. It's the cup that you drink. When you drink from it, it really means life for you because it symbolizes the life that I have for you, the shedding of my blood, which will bring life forevermore. Take it. It's not just mine. It's the Father. The Father... In John's Gospel, how Jesus talks about the Father and I are one. If you know the Father, you know me. If you know me, you know the Father. So take this. Eat of it. Drink of it. Because you're taking me and the Father as we give ourselves to you. How often, how often did Jesus reach out hands of service? Touch the eyes. Heal the blind. The ears, he healed the deaf. By the greatest power in him, he healed the, those who had demons, the demoniacs, who were mentally out of this world. But he healed them, giving of himself, hands of service. 
this is what Christ does for you and I at the table. I don't think we live in a world where people on a day-to-day -day basis reach out to us. Oh, our friends do, our family. And I think COVID has really compounded this. I've just had a couple of examples the last few days in being in various places, and people are still backing off. Like, you know, I, I've had my, I can't tell them this, but I've had my shots, and I'm respecting distance. I'm not a walking disease, I'm a person. But I think we're still experiencing that. Instead of reaching out, people are drawing back. And you stay there and don't bother me. Jesus is the exact opposite. His hands reach out to us. He gives us healing. I don't know in any way that you may need healing tonight. For some, it may be the healing of the body. And I'm not a TV evangelist. I can make you no guarantees. But I know if you take even physical things to the Lord, just taking them to him helps. And we leave it to God, whatever type of healing. But there are so many. Have you read your newspaper, watch the news? People who need that healing to know what it is to be a child of God, to respect their lives and have a decency for their own life and a respect and a confidence in their life so they can have confidence in the lives of others and respect for the lives of others instead of having to take some kind of weapon and hurt them. That's not Jesus. Jesus has hands of healing for you and I for, and for all his creation. Make no mistake about it. Human hands prepared these elements tonight. Human hands have served these elements tonight. But it's been the hand of God in them, among them, through them, through these elements. The hand of God has worked its way through these elements into your life and my life. With Jesus, we see the hands of service. With Jesus, we see the hands of sacrifice. Sacrifice. I kind of go back to my grandparents' generation, and they were typical of people who either during the Second World War or immediately thereafter came to Canada, as many are coming to Canada today from various parts of the world. But I remember in those days being, being a youngster and, and noticing the hands of my grandfather on my mother's side and my grandmother on my dad's, dad's side, his mother. Hands that were been through so much, that were wrinkled and a little bit not quite right. Maybe arthritis or just everything they've had to use those hands for. Hands that came from another country to this country that had to start with, with nothing. And they wanted something and better for their children, just like there are today coming here. Hands of sacrifice. Hands that were willing, were willing, and are willing to go out and do what has to be done for a better life for others, in the family, for their children. Hands of sacrifice. Hands of sacrifice. We remember the sacrifice that Christ made for us on the cross. That sacrifice is seen in his hands and in his feet. For as we, you know, reading the Gospels, his hands and feet were pierced with nails. 
that he who knew no sin bore the, the deepest form of pain for us because he loved us, because he wanted something better for us. That's why his hands are wrinkled. That's why his hands bled. A sacrifice. Not just service, but a sacrifice. When humanity fell with the fall of Adam and Eve, God in all his heart, all through the Old Testament, he wants to bring people back to him. Stop trusting in yourself and just have that childlike trust in me as individuals, as a nation, and I will lead you and I will guide you. Remember when Thomas doubted the resurrection because he wasn't there with the disciples? He said, unless I see the print of the nails in his hands, I won't believe. And he saw them, and he believed. He believed. He saw, what did he see when he saw the hands? He saw the sacrifice that Christ made for him in his life. And doubt was changed to belief. Sitting on the fence was changed to trust in this one who was the Son of God. The hands, of, the hands of Judas are hands of selfishness coming this way, inward. The hands of Jesus are hands of service and hands of sacrifice. And we can be assured of this, absolutely assured, but it makes us do a little bit of self-examination first. Our hands. Each one of us can say, my hands. When my hands are hands of service, when my hands are hands of sacrifice, my hands are like Jesus. And my life, my life, every part of it, my life, when in service and sacrifice those hands, my life is like Jesus. I have come to give you life and life indeed. And perhaps the way we can tell whether we are living that life is what direction do our hands go, outward or inward? I've come to give you life. Hymn number 210, Man of Sorrow's Wondrous Name.
as God has given unto us, we in response, in love, we give back unto God that first which he has given to us. As you know, there are different ways of giving, and I will leave that with you. You know the way that you give your offering to the church, and the session is very thankful for your faithfulness and your obedience over these months of COVID. And we just pray that indeed our gifts are used to make St. Andrews here a place of prayer, a place where the scriptures are taught, a prayer, a, a, a prayer where, and a place where our hands are not just inward, but as they do in so many ways, reach out, because this is what makes St. Andrews a living, dynamic church. I ask you to join with me as we leave the table and the commission as you have it in the bulletin. Jesus went out from the table to a time of prayer. We who have communed with Jesus are invited to pray. As disciples, much will be expected of us. In the shadow of death, God's love was revealed. Before the cross, we are fed, blessed, and empowered. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, which overflows in our lives day by day, and the abiding personal presence of God through the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us this evening, and as we rise tomorrow on Good Friday, continue to be with us as we take this walk with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, indeed to the tomb, but on Easter Sunday to the empty tomb, where there is life for us this day and for always, world without end. Amen. <laughs>